Hey, it's Luke from the Pages Printed, uh, and I'm back with another review. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about this book. Uh, it's by Ian Mortimer, and it's called The Outcasts of Time. Um, it's not actually out until June 2017, so it's a bit of an advanced review. Uh, I was lucky enough to receive an advanced copy, uh, and it's such a good book, I wanted to come on here and talk to you about it. So Ian Mortimer is a historian, chiefly. Um, and you may well have read his books, he's incredibly popular. Um, he's probably best known for a series he does called The Time Traveller's Guide, um, and he's done them to various kind of uh, eras in British history, so to medieval times, to Elizabethan times, uh, and I think his most recent one is to Restoration times. There are probably others um, that I haven't read, um, but the ones I have read are very, very good indeed. Um, what he does is he really immerses the reader in these historical time periods by uh, kind of describing every single little detail of life in those times. So he imagines that you are there in that time period uh, and it's a guide for you as a time traveller. So he tells you what it'll smell like, uh, what you'll be dressed in, what you should eat, um, how people will be talking, what it smells like, what it sounds like, what it looks like, the kind of people you'll meet, the kind of things you should be wary of, the diseases you could catch, um, all sorts. They're fascinating uh, and they're a really kind of um, interesting and innovative way of writing history uh, in a way that I think has actually caught on quite a lot in recent years. I think in recent years you're finding that a lot of history books have become very exciting and very involving. Uh, and I think Ian Mortimer really spearheaded that revolution from the slightly dusty, old-fashioned tomes you may be more familiar with when you think of history books. Um, so those are definitely well worth a read, uh, and I would check them out if you get a chance, and if you're a history fan. They are mainly based around English history, but then we do have some of the best history stories in the whole of the world over here in England, so uh, I would definitely recommend giving them a read. Might be biased, but uh, actually I, I am biased, but I would still recommend them. So uh, this isn't Ian Mortimer's first foray into fiction. Um, he has previously written a trilogy set in the 1560s, uh, but they were published under his middle names, James Forrester. Uh, I haven't read those, but they are well reviewed online, so it could be worth checking out as well if you enjoy this when you give it a read. So, this is the first fiction book he's published under his kind of main name and the name he uses as a historian. Uh, and it's really fascinating as he utilizes those skills as a historian uh, for kind of fact hunting and for uh, describing situations and places and times with um, incredible clarity and a real sense of place that'll take the reader into the world he's created uh, and through the different time periods you'll move through in the book. It's a really fascinating concept for a book, uh, so the plot essentially uh, takes two brothers, John and William. It's 1348, uh, the country is in the grip of the Black Death and um, it's a very immediate opening. You're plunged into this horrific, horrific medieval world where the Black Death is everywhere uh, and, and people are really struggling to survive. I mean, the dead are, you know, everywhere, mass graves, people are very kind of untrustworthy of each other because the, uh, the plague um, symptoms aren't always massively immediate and people cover them up for various reasons. Um, so there's a lot of mistrust, there's a lot of death, and uh, it's a really, really scary opening couple of chapters, really. Um, and the good thing is, is that you instantly root for John and William, uh, who are the main characters of this book. Um, some horrific things happen, like really, really horrific. I was uh, gasping out loud, it was so, <laughs> so shocking. Um, but essentially what happens is that John and William uh, both get the plague, and they're concerned that they're going to die and go to hell. As the end of their life draws near, they are given a choice. Either go home and spend their last six days with their families in kind of their own world, um, or basically search for salvation across the forthcoming centuries, living each one of their remaining days 99 years after the last. So it means the book goes from 1348, it then goes into the 1400s, the 1500s, the 1600s, the 1700s, the 1800s, and the 1900s. Um, so there's a huge amount of change. You know, you go from at the start of a book to a medieval country with Black Death, 
and then you travel through all these really, really fascinating time periods. So you're going through the kind of Tudor periods, uh, you're going through the Civil War, going through the Victorian era, and then you end up uh, during the Second World War. So fascinating, really, really fascinating. Uh, and the great skill that Mortimer has is that he's able to just plunge a reader into that situation and, and describe it so vividly and, and bring it to so much life that you don't really kind of, you don't really feel disoriented. Um, obviously the characters who travel through time do feel disoriented uh, and whilst the plot is a little bit heavy I guess in places, I mean um, there's kind of a real um, kind of talk of salvation and retribution and a lot of fear of heaven and hell and death and that kind of thing. There are some kind of fish out of the water situations that make for amusing reading and, and kind of lighten things up a little bit. Uh, of the two brothers, William as well is one who flirts with everything that moves, which uh, makes for some quite amusing situations. Um, and John and William are both incredibly touching and uh, great characters who you do really enjoy travelling through time with. The plot is moving, it's really emotional. I had a bit of a cry when this book ended and I'm not one who does that particularly often. Um, it just kind of leads to a, a really nice place uh, and, and the characters go on, uh, God it sounds cliche, but they do go on journeys, not only through time but as people. I know, sounds awful, but it's true. Um, so it's, it's a really cracking read, uh, beautifully written, hugely well described, excellent characters, um, and just, if you're a fan of history, you'll love it. And if you're a fan of good books as well, you'll love it, I think, uh, too. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of history. Huge history fan. Um, and I'm also, I am a big fan of historical fiction. But I have a bit of an issue with historical fiction that tends to sex the facts up a bit. Can make for good reading, but, you know, it, it doesn't help in the long run when you're kind of looking back on, you know, it... it maybe spurs you into researching those situations and you look into them and find that they were completely different from what was laid out in the book you just read. I've no issue with authors kind of changing things. I really don't. But when it's kind of sexed up just for the sake of it, not a massive fan. I mean, history is hugely sexy as it is. Yeah, horrific things happen, but there's a lot of scandal, a lot of sex, a lot of corruption, a lot of death, a lot of murder. And there are hugely fascinating stories that I think um, need to be told. And Ian Mortimer is one of the people who is telling them. Um, so as a result, I absolutely recommend The Outcasts of Time. Um, in terms of stars, I don't want you to think I'm Mr. Positive all the time. There are books I don't like. But this one is getting five out of five as well. Um, it's just really, really good. Uh, so when it comes out in June, um, I would absolutely, absolutely recommend you give it a read. Uh, I believe it's out in hardback then and published by Simon and Schuster. Uh, that is it for me today. Thank you for listening. I've droned on a bit longer than usual because I am really bloody enthusiastic about this book. So uh, pick it up in June. Pre-order it on Amazon or go to your local bookshops and ask them to get it in in June. Um, and enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, let me know what you think. Uh, if you've got any history books you like and would like to recommend to me, please let me know. Send me a message on Instagram, comment on here, um, all that kind of business. Uh, cheers. Bye-bye.